Some of you might be wondering about the significance of the feast that we're celebrating today, the feast of the dedication of St. John the Lateran Church. Well, that is the cathedral of the Diocese of Rome, our mother church, presided over by Bishop Jorge Mario Bergoglio who presides in charity over the Universal Catholic Church as Pope Francis, the Supreme Pontiff of the Universal Church. And so this day is a symbol of the unity of the Catholic Church. And because we're celebrating the feast of St. John the Lateran Church, the Cathedral of Rome, our mother, all our readings today are about the temple of God. They are using three different images to describe the divine presence. First, water in the first reading from Ezekiel. Second, breath or spirit from the second reading. And third, fire from our gospel reading, the gospel of John. In our first reading, the prophet Ezekiel is speaking about a vision of fresh water gushing forth and flowing out from the temple, giving life to everything on its path. In our second reading, St. Paul is reminding the Corinthians that they are now that temple, the temple that is built on the foundation of Jesus Christ with the breath of God, the Spirit of God dwelling within them. And in the Gospel, Jesus is being portrayed by John as an angry prophet. He is burning with indignation as he carries out a symbolic prophetic act that is popularly known as the cleansing of the temple. John tells us Jesus made a whip of cords and used it to drive away the money changers and the animal traders. Wow. It's not very often that we get a, that kind of a picture of our meek and mild, our gentle Jesus. But you might be asking, where is the fire there? Well, John tells us that what Jesus did made the disciples recall the words of the scriptures. But he quotes only one half of the verse. It, it comes from Psalm 63 or 69, verse 10. And the whole quotation goes this way. Because zeal for your house has consumed me, I am now hated by those who hate you. These words have been said originally by the prophet Jeremiah, six centuries before Jesus. If you want to check on the original cleansing of the temple story in Jeremiah, check out chapter 7 of Jeremiah. Like Jesus, Jeremiah got into trouble because he publicly denounced, he denounced the kind of piety that was being practiced by worshipers in the temple. And he called it empty and meaningless worship. Walang katuturang pagsamba. Pwede pala yun. Na pwedeng sumamba ang tao, pero walang katuturan. The prophet called attention to the big disconnect between their apparent religiosity and their total disregard from the covenant. How they allowed, how they allowed their fellow Israelites to be murdered in cold blood by those in authority, leaving thousands of women widowed and children orphaned. Does it sound familiar to you? 
Jeremiah, who was himself from a priestly family, was in effect accusing his fellow priests of reneging on their duty to keep the perpetual fire in the temple burning. Because that's written in Leviticus chapter 6. Trabaho ng pare ang alagaan ng apoy ng templo. He is the caretaker, the guardian of the fire. Jeremiah seems fully aware that the fire in the temple was merely symbolic of God's justice and compassion for the poor, which was first revealed to Moses in the burning bush. Remember Exodus 3, verses 3 to 10. This was the significance of that fire that Moses later instructed the Levitical priests to keep alive and burning perpetually before the Holy of Holies. Trabahong pare ang manggatong. Trabaho ng pare ang gatungan, ang walang hanggang apoy ng templo. Titiyakin niyang hinding-hindi ito mamamatay. That's a strict Instruction in Leviticus 6, the fire in the temple shall be kept burning by the priests. The priest should never allow it to be extinguished. But, of course, the priests had reduced it to a ritual. The ritual ng panggagatong. It became empty of meaning. It was like the fire that was supposed, supposed to be burning in the heart of the temple had gone out, had been extinguished. Now, it is burning in the heart of the prophet. And the prophet is shouting and saying, zeal for your house consumes me. The closest Tagalog translation that I can think of for that line is ang alab ng puso para sa tahanan mo sa dibdib ko'y buhay. Does it sound familiar to you? Yes, it is the line from the lupang hinirang. Alab ng puso sa dibdib mo'y buhay. And the lament of Jeremiah is sa dibdib nyo, patay ang alab ng puso. We have come together again for our annual clergy retreat as shepherds to whom the Lord has entrusted his flock. It is a good occasion for us to rekindle the flame of our prophetic, our priestly and kingly calling and mission. Magandang itanong sa pananalangin natin sa mga susunod na araw ng ating pananahimik. Ang alab ba ng puso Sa dibdib ko'y buhay pa. We are supposed to be guardians of the fire, the fire of God's redeeming love. Our task is to keep this fire alive and burning in the hearts and souls of our faithful. Kahapon, as soon as I arrived here in Tagaytay, I went out to the garden of the Good Shepherd uh, Sisters, to take a look at the majestic view of the Taal Lake from the view deck. It looked so serene and quiet. But the cloud of smoke coming out of its crater and the thick layer of ashes around that crater cannot but warn us na may nagliliyab. Sa kailaliman, there is a fire that is burning underneath. And we hope it does not explode again anytime soon. <laughs> Father Ray was already asking for the contingency plan in case something like that happened. And the sister said, oh, please don't think about that. <laughs> you know, sometimes in prayer... I feel like God's anger is also raging like a volcano. 
that is getting ready to explode. Especially when people forget their history too quickly. It is still blazing as it did before Moses. When he sees the affliction of his people, when he hears their cry, when he knows how their sufferings are caused by indifference and the callousness of human beings to fellow human beings. We have come here to Tagaytay to pray. And so you see, prayer is not all about finding peace. Sometimes it will also be about seeing as God sees, feeling as God feels. Sometimes it will also be about being disturbed by it.